Here's a surefire method of growing large bismuth crystals. If you want to work with bismuth, you should really know these tips. Welcome to Destructive Creativity, where we help you build your scientific knowledge and have fun doing it. Today, we will be diving a little bit deeper into bismuth crystals. Now, we've done one video on them already, but since then, we have learned a few new things and want to share them with you. I'll be sure to link that video down in the description so that you can check it out. If this is something that interests you, be sure to hit that subscribe button and let us know where you're from. We really love interacting with you. Let's cover a few things right off the bat. It's hot, steaming liquid metal in a pot. Don't be dumb. Don't touch it. Wear your goggles. Yeah, some things shouldn't have to be learned by experience. I resent that. The first step is to buy some bismuth. I got mine off of eBay. I'm starting with around 15 pounds. Typically, you need at least 5 pounds to get good crystals, and the more you have, the bigger and better the crystals will be. Bismuth melts at 271.4 degrees Celsius, so we do need to heat it up. I have a propane burner, so I use that because it takes a lot less time than on a stovetop, but either one works. Never allow water to drip onto the melted bismuth, as it will turn to steam instantly and fling liquid bismuth everywhere. Stanley would not approve. The pot itself will be hot enough that standard oven mitts will not insulate your hands properly, so we attach a few clamps and hold those if we have to move the pot. The pot is important. It must be stainless steel and small enough to allow the bismuth to be somewhat deep. And remember, once you use pots or utensils with liquid bismuth, you can't use it for cooking or anything to do with food prep. It is slightly toxic. Once brought inside, use a stainless steel fork to remove the slag from the surface. You only need to remove the slag once, and then it becomes a watching game. You are watching for a copper color to form on the surface. That is a cue that it is about to start crystallizing. Again, this is very important to know when the crystals will start. This will determine your success. One other tip that really will help you grow crystals is to keep the pot very still. If you move the pot around when the liquid is cooling, then you're encouraging growth on the sides of the pot instead of at the center where you want that one crystal to grow. Let's watch the crystals form small squares on the surface. You certainly can let them grow on their own and then pull them out, but I want to take this a few steps farther. Melt the bismuth again and watch for that copper color to form. We insulate the pot with a few layers of tin foil. Make sure to keep the pot completely still. Once you see the color start to change to copper, place a small seed crystal in the center of the liquid and let it sit still until you see the surface start to crust over. Pull it out and admire your handiwork. Now let's grow crystals onto an amethyst shard. We have gone ahead and preheated an amethyst spear and a few other cool gems and minerals in the oven. The shards should be at least 500 degrees Fahrenheit. Just make sure your oven is rated for those high temperatures, otherwise you might melt the insides of your oven. After heating the bismuth up again, we'll insulate the pot with a few layers of tin foil. We are watching for that copper color on the surface, and once you see it, let it sit for about 30 seconds, and then dip the still hot shard into the liquid metal. Much like before, let it be completely still until you see the surface start to crust over. Don't wait too long or it'll be stuck. In order to keep it completely still, try rigging up a system so you don't have to hold it. This helps immensely.
Now, if you don't preheat the shards before you stick them into the liquid bismuth, the result is still cool, as you can see, but it doesn't give you those angular uh, hopper type crystals like what we want to see. While we take a closer look at what we created, I'll explain to you why the crystals want to make the shapes that they do. Bismuth atoms naturally form into rhombohedral crystals. Think of it as a stretched cube. The reason it forms such cool shapes when cooled slowly goes right back to energy conservation. We have put a lot of energy in the form of heat into these poor little bismuth atoms, and in their liquid state, they're flailing around and moving very quickly. But as they cool, they begin to freeze into their solid state and start forming a rhombohedral structure. As long as it is done gradually, as individual atoms freeze, they will gravitate toward atoms that are already in their more stable state, attaching themselves face to face and building outward in hopper formations. We plan on making another bismuth episode in the future, showing you exactly how you can control the colors that you make so you can actually choose which colors you want. It's very cool. Make sure you find that subscribe button so you stay up to date. Thanks for watching. New content is coming out every week and bloopers are coming up. See ya! This is Stanley, our safety advisor. He says, don't be dumb. And even though it's legal, don't get high on pot. Even if Stanley says it's okay, Stanley is a bad friend. <laughs> Wear your glasses and don't be dumb. <laughs> Otherwise, you might melt the insides of your oven. It'll take a while for it to get that hot, but it will get there eventually.